Hello everybody, Umbria above here, and we are gonna chat about a few things related to Italy today. We're gonna to talk about what's going on in Italy, projects in the Palazzo, a couple of Italian terms that are useful to know about, uh, a little bit about Italian food, and then about Italian roots and mentioning Stanley Tucci. So let's kick off with what's going on in Italy. Well, of course, the Vendemia has happened in most of Italy, the, the, wine, the wine grape harvest, and now we're gearing up for the olive harvest. So that's coming up here in the next couple weeks, and we're really excited. We actually, as you know, our olive oil has won international prizes in Berlin and London, top prizes. And um, we actually have a pre-sale going on if you check out our website. But anyway, that's happening in the next couple weeks that we're doing the harvest, which happens once a year around this time. Uh, projects in the Palazzo. So you may have seen that we have finally installed our new garage door, which we're really happy about. Inside our garage, we're going to have a vertical two car garage situation. So we're gonna be making the most use of space in an ancient space, but with modern needs. So we have two cars and we need a place to put them. And parking is very limited in our town, ancient town, very limited parking. So we're actually gonna have two spots. And the garage door that we installed is very space, uh, sp space saving. So when it opens, it doesn't occupy a lot of space. So that's really great too. Uh, we also have a lot of things going on with the garden planning, with lighting decisions, with fabric decisions. We've gotten to that point now, and I'll have updates on more details there shortly. Okay, moving on to Italian terms that are kind of interesting and maybe not always talked about. So, fuori squadra, what does that mean? Fuori squadra, it means something that's not at a 90 degree, degree angle. So especially if you are dealing with renovating an ancient home as we are, our ancient palazzo that we are restoring and revitalizing, we have quite a few, probably every angle in the house is fuori squadra. So it is not a 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. It's maybe more like, it looks maybe like a 90 degree angle, but it's slightly, larger or slightly narrower. So you can't always tell with the naked eye, but when you measure it or you try to uh, place a piece of furniture there, or you need to redo the plaster, or you need to do some lighting or electrical, uh, you find out pretty fast that, so that's a really good term for those of you who are going to be restoring houses, fuori squadra. Okay, that's the first term. Second term is stanotte. Stanotte. Okay, so that means tonight, it doesn't mean this evening. So in English, we use tonight, or we're having dinner tonight at blah, blah, blah. In Italy, you would use, in Italian, you would use stasera in that case. So stanotte is really during the night, usually when you're sleeping. Uh, and the confusing thing about it is that Italians use it to mean last night and also this night. Come hai dormito stanotte? They might even ask you that in the afternoon. How did you sleep during the night, talking about last night? But they, someone might respond, stanotte dormo bene. Like tonight I'll sleep well. But they talk about it the night that's coming and the night that passed. So you really have to use the verb tense to figure out what they're talking about most of the time. Um, it can be really confusing. You have to use a little bit of context, a little bit of logic, but it definitely doesn't mean evening. It doesn't mean this evening. It means during the night, usually when you're sleeping. And it can mean the past night or the future night. So you have to be clever and use your um, some context logic. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Italian food things. So uh, I am an Italian. I grew up in the United States. I was Italian from birth because of my mother and my grandparents. I then met my Italian husband. So we have a life where we go back and forth between Italy and the United States 
pretty frequently. And our residency is in Italy. We spend most of our time in Italy. But because we have a lot of family in the United States, our boys are in high school in the United States, we go back and forth pretty regularly. And so we, res we observe very quickly and very often a lot of differences in the culture and also the food. So in Italy, of course, there's a classic pasta dish called spaghetti aglio olio, spaghetti with garlic and oil, which has usually a little parsley, usually a little pepperoncino, definitely some garlic, definitely olive oil, um, probably a little bit of grated cheese and spaghetti. And that's it, okay? So we were in the United States a few months ago and on the menu was spaghetti aglio olio. Spaghetti aglio olio. Spaghetti with garlic and olive oil. And this particular menu would have the name of the dish and then a description of it underneath. So that was really fun because in the description of spaghetti aglio olio, the first ingredient was fettuccine. Already wrong, right? Fettuccine is another type of pasta, not spaghetti. So if you're gonna do fettuccine aglio olio, which I've personally never heard of, that would be fine. But the title of the dish was spaghetti aglio olio and the first ingredient was fettuccine. The second ingredient was gamberi, shrimp. Shrimp do not belong in spaghetti aglio olio. So the description went on to include garlic, olive oil, a few other random things, but it was very funny because in Italy, these things are sacred. The ingredients in a classic recipe are sacred and you don't change them. But in the United States, everybody changes things. They mix it around, they're creative. And that doesn't fly in Italy and it flies in America. So it's just a difference in cultures. We were in a restaurant uh, another evening where the waiter was really sweet in the United States, really sweet. And he was trying to explain to my husband a, an Italian dish. And my husband just looked at him and he said, I am Italian, which like basically meant do not try to explain food to me, especially Italian food. So it is, it is often amusing, these differences in culture uh, and, and very different. Okay, last thing we're gonna talk about today is Italian roots. So a lot of you are Italian American. And usually what that means is that you have some kind of Italian ancestry, right? But you grew up in the United States and your culture is mostly American or Italian American, which is a very different culture than Italian. So those are three cultures we're talking about. United States culture, Italian American culture, and Italian culture, three very different. Usually Italian Americans are mostly American and Italian American because the Italian culture is, is so different, especially now with all of the uh, decades, if not centuries since the Italian American ancestor came over to the United States. So what I recently saw related to this on Instagram was Stanley Tucci went back to his ancestral town of Marzi. And I thought that was so cool because so many Italian Americans, they, they come to Italy like a pilgrimage and I think that's really awesome. But they go to Rome, Florence, Venice, Cinque Terre, maybe Sicily, uh, maybe Amalfi Coast, Tuscany. And the thing is that those places, while important to see and beautiful, are highly curated and cultivated towards tourists. And so the experience is really going to be a touristic experience. You can find authenticity, but it's hard. So you can find it, but it's not easy. And, and you may not even know that it's not authentic if you haven't done enough travel in other places where people don't speak any English in Italy and so forth. So a lot of people don't even realize they're not having an authentic experience because they only ever go to places that only speak English like the ones I just mentioned, but there are, there are of course some others. And so I was so delighted to see that Stanley Tucci 
went to his own ancestral town, which is not one of those places that's heavily touristed. And I highly encourage you, if you're an Italian American, to go to your ancestral land. Even if, you know, I've heard people say, oh, it's in the middle of the South, somewhere down in Calabria. Like they don't even really know what region it's in. But find out what region it's in. Find out the name of the town. It's not that hard to find out. You ask your family, you do a tiny bit of research online. Uh, there's some sites that you put in your last name and it'll pop up with the areas in the towns where that last name is most common. So if you're really in a pinch, you can do that, but you should be able to find the town and I promise you it will be worth it. It will be an adventure. Often I hear of people who are welcomed back like with open arms, even if they don't understand what their relatives are saying to them. Uh, and it's just a completely different experience than going to Florence, Rome, Venice, Tuscany. Like you, it's it's your town. It's a town that your your people came from, and it's a completely different experience. So I thought it was so cool that Stanley Tucci went there, and um, you know these towns they may not be perfectly curated or cultivated or where everything is perfect and there are um you know perfect little coffee bars but there are authentic coffee bars and there's an authentic plate of pasta that doesn't cost more than eight euros like i see these menus in the tourist places and it's like really 15 euros for a plate of pasta 20 no no so anyway i thought that was really cool if you're italian american hunt down your roots go to those towns Go to the touristy places too, but don't always keep going back to them. Um, Cause the, obviously those places are beautiful, important, but I wouldn't make them the only places that you go to, which is what I, what I see happen maybe a little bit too frequently. Okay, that's it. Uh, I think it's Tuesday. I've kind of lost track of town, of, of time. Um, there's a picture of a garden in what I think is Italy. I'm not in my own house right now. And I thought that was pretty cool because we are planning our garden and that's it. Okay, have a great week everybody and we'll talk to you next time.